Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe. Now, large crowds are queuing up uh, to honor George Floyd, the African-American man whose killing by a white policeman sparked mass protests for racial justice across the United States and the world. The memorial is taking place in Houston, in Texas, where Floyd uh, grew up. Mourners have been filing past the coffin containing his body. Thousands of people are braving the sweltering heat to view the casket of George Floyd before tomorrow's private funeral. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, all the mourners have to wear masks and uh, their time in the sanctuary in the Fountain of Peace Church has been limited. Uh, meanwhile, former Vice President and Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden is expected to meet with uh, Floyd's family but won't make any public appearances in person. Floyd's death two weeks ago in uh, Minneapolis in Minnesota has uh, prompted the city to dismantle the police force and uh, Democrats in Congress have introduced a bill to make it easier to prosecute officers accused of misconduct. We'll get back to that story a little bit later. Now, the solidarity that the world is showing against racism following the killing of uh, that African-American man, George Floyd, has been fast gaining pace. Many marches have taken place around the world, both in the memory of George Floyd and also the issues his death has been bringing up with struggles in other countries. Is this a struggle that all countries should seize the moment and unite behind? Well, joining us uh, on Zoom to talk about this is author, academic, public intellectual, researcher, business consultant, and also president of the Black Consciousness uh, uh, Movement uh, Unity, Professor Itumaleng Musala. Thanks so much indeed for joining us, Prof. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much, Peter. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be on your program and to speak to South Africans. All right, so as a man who uh, lives by the politics of black consciousness, when you see what's played out in America and has spilled out to the rest of the world, what are the thoughts that have come to mind for you? I can only think back to the words of Stephen Bantu Biko, who said that until we are able to give to the world, and in particular to South Africa, the greatest gift ever, and that is a more human face. And what I'm thinking through is, my goodness, how far we are from that moment. We should have been at it in this country. We had an opportunity historically, 24 years, 25 years ago, to bestow on our own country that human face, a more humane face. It's not there in our country. It hasn't been able to be achieved in the United States of America in all of the years, 400 years of mm. slavery and racism and colonialism in that country has made sure that that humane face just doesn't come around. It's not there in the UK. It's not there all over the world where people other than white people are part of the society. Mm. And so it is said for us, uh, it's said that for me, and I know you'd like to talk more to, with me about that tonight, it's said that for me to have seen just how almost unconcerned we've been. I know we've been paining about it. I know mm. we've been scared like everybody has been around the world. We've been angry, but we just seem to have been somewhat unconcerned mm. as South Africa, as a nation, as black people in particular who have gone through probably the worst of, the, of what is happening in the United States. So, Prof, what could South so Africa... My question is, what, where is my country? Yeah. Where is my country? So, Prof, what could South Africa or South Africans have done more or be doing more at this time? At this time, I think that we should... The least we should have done is to have done 
as much as the rest of the people are doing in the world. Mm. You know, uh, Peter, the point has been made in the media, in the reporting that's been happening, that uh, not only have black people in America risen up in solidarity and in expression of anger against what has happened, but all people of goodwill throughout the world, not just in America, in the UK, in Canada, in, even in the Eastern countries, people have risen up to at least, at least, Peter, identify with their family, at least express their anger about violence from the security forces, in particular from the police, mm. and even more from the white policemen. Remember, it is both. It is not just violence of white policemen. It is also violence of the police against citizens. Mm. It's been happening, as you know, it's happened in this country, happened before, it happened since 1994, happened just the other day as we got into the COVID uh, crisis in our country. The very first thing that happened mm. that the security forces did was to kill a person in his own house. And I'm talking here about the cause of Mr. Koza and Alex. Mm. And so I'm saying that South Africa should have been among the first to get out into the streets and brave the coronavirus. And I say that very, very, very carefully and also say it with a, with a challenge and a demand that maybe we shouldn't have been, we don't need to have done it the way other people have done it. We could have created other more innovative ways of doing it, but kneeling, we should have kneeled in support of George Floyd's family and in support of so, him. So what do you say about people? We know racism well, more than anybody else. Yeah, Prof, what do you say then to people who say, but hang on, this is happening in Africa. We've seen uh, people get shot after an election in Zimbabwe. Yes. We've seen yes. police yes, with yes, a heavy yes, hand yes. in Burundi. Yes. When do we kneel for them? When do we kneel for okay. Collins Cosa and uh, uh, those at Marikana, for example? That was going to be my next point. My mm. next point is maybe this reticence that we have demonstrated comes from the fact that we haven't even been able to kneel for our own people on, in our own continent, just next door in Zimbabwe. We've seen the behavior of the police when it comes to their relationship with the citizens. When citizens stand up to protest about anything, the police do, don't hesitate to use unjustifiable force on them. But this country, is different, uh, Peter. This is South Africa. This is the country that has gone through the cruelest form of racial and colonial violence from white people from the West, from capitalism, from colonialism, from religions that came into our country and our text, the culture and identities of our people. We have been the most abused in those multiple ways. We should, we have no absolute moral right to be quiet about any one of these things happening, whether it is on this continent or it is in the United States of America. It didn't have to be a white man's knee on a black man's neck. That should have been the beginning of our responding to the, we've been uninternational since 1994. It, it, who should be leading this? Who should be leading this charge then? Is it our political leaders, our parties, or just our communities? Well, first of all, in general, our leaders, and I'm not limiting it to political leaders. I mean, I I come not only from a political struggle; I come from a church struggle as well. And we didn't have to wait for anybody's permission to do it. In the churches, we didn't even have to wait for our fellow, you know, fellow other denominations. In my church, in the Methodist Church, from way back, you know, we've had struggle icons and leaders like Zed Al-Mahabani, who was 
a political leader, the head of the ANC. And we've had the ANC being led right from the beginning, right from the beginning by JL uh, Dube, and who was first president of the ANC, who did that as church name, not as, as, as political leaders. So I'm not limiting to the leadership on this issue, limiting it to political parties, but certainly political parties should have been doing that. But in this particular instance, given the fact that this is a matter that affected the entire nation, I think President Cyril Ramaphosa should have led all of us. I have actually, I was actually very disappointed to see that in the end it was left to the ANC to do it as a party political campaign, as a campaign. This is a matter that the entire South Africa, we are told that we said no to apartheid in 1994. We are told that we committed to no more racism. We get given Mandela's statement again and again when he ever when he says never and never and never again will this happen. My goodness, it's never stopped. It's been okay. happening during his reign. It's been happening during Baker's reign. It's happened during Zuma's reign. It's happening now during Ramaphosa's reign, and mm. it's been happening in our continent with them present. All right. So it's church leaders, it's community leaders, it's political leaders. It's citizens, all of us. We don't need anybody's permission. The difficulty about now is that we were locked up in our houses through regulations of COVID in our country. Of course, I wouldn't be complaining if it hadn't been for the fact that I'm respecting uh, my nation's watch. But other people went out into the streets. I mean, I felt bad last night. That why did I even, even care about what the regulations are? Why didn't I just go out? Since nobody has said, South Africans, get out of your gate. Stop just at your gate. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't need the American embassy. The American embassy is an irrelevance. Just get out of your street, at your gate, with your children, with your family. Just kneel there like everybody else is kneeling against racism all over the world. Everybody but us. What do we do? We leave it to dichotomous party political programs. Just typical of us. And that's why, quite frankly, if we continue like this, we will never be free. We are not free, and we will never be free. And we don't understand racism. And that is important for us. It is important also for the Americans. It is important for the Britons, for the Brazilians, everywhere where racism against black people. It is important for us to understand what is racism. It's not an attitude of mine, it's a system. It's a system that is part of another system. It was given there by colonial, by slavery, in fact. It travels its way, way back from slavery into colonialism, yeah. into apartheid. Prof, Prof unfortunately, we've run out of time and we're going to have to leave it there. But I think this is a conversation that I know. I think this is a conversation we'll have to pick up again. But uh, it certainly isn't one that's going to disappear very soon. But thanks so much indeed for giving us some insights uh, this evening. That was uh, Professor Tomaleng Musala, who's the president of the Black Consciousness uh, Movement Unity, uh, speaking to us about... Uh, race issues uh, sparked again by the death of uh, African-American George Floyd. We'll have more on that.